Hey friends, welcome back to She's At It Again. My name is Tanya. If you're new to our channel, we do a lot of cooking around here. Today's one of those days and we're just gonna make some French bread. I have guests coming over in a couple of days. We're gonna have a big pan of spaghetti, some salad, and we need bread to go along with it. So I can't remember if I've done a video on this before, but today's the day if I haven't, and you will be surprised at how few ingredients, how easy this is. I know I always say this, but just watch, just watch. You just won't believe it until you see how easy it is. But go with me as we make a really great loaf of French bread that you're gonna enjoy, and you can turn it into so many different things. Ours is probably gonna have some Italian seasoning on it to go along with our spaghetti, but you could make a big sub sandwich with these. The possibilities are just endless. So go with us as we make a really good loaf of French bread. All right, the first thing we want to do is get out our stand mixer. You will want to have, there it is, a dough hook. <laughs> We're going to put, um, I would say one to two tablespoons, really just depending on how sweet you want your bread. It really doesn't give an overwhelming, uh, overwhelming sweetness to it, but you want your yeast to be able to feed on something so it can come alive, wake up, and do its job. So I'm going to put just a little bit of honey in here. This is the last bit of honey out of this jug and I had to heat up the jug just in a, a warm sink of water. You don't ever want to put this in the microwave or anything crazy like that because it is a plastic jug. Okay, set that aside. Now, keep in mind, all that's in there is honey. This is warm water. This feels like warm bath water. It's a cup of warm water. I'm gonna put that in there. And I'm not even gonna stir it. I'm just gonna swish this around a little bit. And you don't want it over 120 degrees because that will kill your yeast. Yeast likes it warm, but yeast don't like it hot. All right, we're gonna put about two teaspoons of yeast. This is just dry yeast. Sprinkle it over the top. And if you have any doubt at all, if your yeast is still good, if you've had it in the pantry for a while, if you don't keep it in the freezer or the refrigerator, then go ahead and allow it to sit in this mixture for a little while and see if it activates. If it doesn't activate, toss it out, go get some new yeast. That's what's going to make your bread rise. I don't have any doubt that mine's fresh. I use it too much. It could probably never go bad because I just, I don't own any that long. All right, to that, see mine's already starting to get foamy. Let me take this camera and see if I can. See how foamy that is down there. All right, to that, we are going to add about two tablespoons of, this is just extra virgin olive oil, it's organic. And I'm just eyeballing it, but please feel free to measure if you wanna do that. I've just done this too many times and I know how almost, how almost infallible this is. All right, to that we're gonna add three level cups of plain flour. This is organic flour, it's not bleached, it's not anything taken out of it, so something has to be enriched. This is just organic plain flour. And on top of that, we will put a teaspoon of salt. Mine just happens to be pink Himalayan salt. It's my favorite kind to use. Right on top of the flour. Put our dough hook on. We're gonna let this mix for about five minutes and then we'll let it rest. So for five minutes, we'll let this go. Okay, five minutes have gone by. You can tell it's been five minutes because my mixer keeps migrating across the counter a bit. All right, this is what our dough looks like. And I know I've said this over and over again, but if you've never joined us before, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. This should feel like soft baby skin. If your dough is tacky, 
and sticks to your hands, um, it has too much moisture to it. It has too much water, so it needs to have more flour added to it. If it is too dry and does not feel soft, like baby skin, then it needs more liquid added to it. So more water or more oil. So that is just such a good feeling dough. All right, we're gonna let this rest for about five minutes and then we'll come back and I'll turn the mixer back on. I'm not sure why I feel like you need to see me turn the mixer back on, but just for, I guess, a mental picture of what the next step needs to be. So all our ingredients together in a bowl, mix for five minutes, rest for five minutes, and then we'll come back in just a bit and turn it back on. I'll set my timer. We'll be right back. All right, rested for five minutes. We're just gonna turn the mixer back on and let it go for 40 minutes. Not too fast, but you want it to all get incorporated. We'll be back. All right. Mixer has yet migrated across the counter again. It's been 40 minutes and the gluten has been activated to say the least. Again, this dough should not be sticky and stick to your hands where you can't get it off just by touching the original ball of dough. This is one of those recipes that years ago when I had a automatic bread machine, actually I had two of them, they were just alike. And because sometimes I needed two loaves and I just couldn't do it fast enough in a regular machine, but I used it a lot. I didn't necessarily use it to bake the bread in, which it would do. It had the capability of doing that, but all I needed it to do was mix it. So basically I just dumped the ingredients in there in the order listed, push the button and walk off it mixed it for five minutes, it rested for five minutes, then it mixed it again for 40 minutes. At the end of, you know, an hour and, and some odd amount of time, just a, you know, enough time for me to go run an errand or something, I'd come back, the machine would go off, and then I would proceed with shaping the bread. Actually, it would mix it for 40 minutes and then it would rest for an hour. So I had plenty of time to go run an errand or do whatever I needed to while my bread was mixing. That was so convenient, but I decided at that time, I thought, you know what? I can just use my stand mixer. This is so convenient, but one day my mixer stopped working. I turned it on and it just wouldn't move. And the craziest thing was I turned the other one on, which was identical to the other one. One was my mother's and she didn't use it any longer, so she gave it to me. But we had identical bread machines and the other one stopped working the exact same day. It was just too weird. Um, so anyway, that was, my, that was my nod to, you just need to use your stand mixer. But if you have an automatic bread machine and just have a dough cycle on it that you can use without baking it, that is the perfect way to get bread done. But this is a recipe that I've had since back in the day when I would use my automatic bread machine. And it has served me so well over these years. And I'll refer back a lot of times to my bread machine cookbooks for the recipes because I don't need to be told how long it needs to rest on a, on a first rise or how long it needs to, you know, be mixed or anything like that. I just want to know the list of ingredients. I can figure that all out myself. But those bread machine cookbooks are a great resource for really neat breads. Okay, I'm just trying to get the residual off the edge of it. All right, this is what our dough looks like. This is how easily it stretches and it has lots of gluten in it. But again, it feels like soft baby skin. All right, so what we're gonna do is 
we're going to cover this up. I'll have one of those disposable shower caps put over this and we're going to leave it in the bowl for about an hour to rest. Ta-da! So at this point, I can wash my dough hook and get some other things done, but I will set my timer for an hour. And then after an hour, we'll come back and shape this because this is considered the first rise. So we'll be back in just a bit. All right, our timer has gone off and we are ready to shape our bread. Now remember, this was just the first rise. It needs to rise twice. Let me get my bench scraper out. If you don't have one of these, these are fabulous. 75 cents at the um, restaurant supply place. Crazy how something that's so cheap could be one of your favorite things you ever bought at the silly place. All right, I just clean the countertops off. So, it comes out pretty clean. Now, you might want to consider how long your baking sheet is. I just have a piece of parchment that I probably made saltines on. You can see the little squares on there. But consider how long, either vertically or diagonally, your baking sheet is so you can make sure to not roll your bread too long. You kind of have to squish it up or roll it into a C shape, which looks really funny when you're serving French bread. not sticky dough. I'm going to take it and gently roll it up. Don't do it so tight that it just feels confined and doesn't allow it to rise well enough. Just loosely roll it up with your fingers. Notice I didn't put any flour on the countertop. If you want to, you can, but it really doesn't require it. It really doesn't stick. So, see how beautifully it handles? All right, we're gonna lay it just like that. This is what it looks like on the end. So it's just kind of coiled up. And I'm gonna put a towel over this. And I'm gonna put it in my lower oven and turn the light on just to give it enough warmth to where it helps the rising process. So we're gonna leave this in there for one hour and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. And then after that, we'll bake it off. So we'll be right back. Okay, our oven is preheated and so we're gonna get our bread out of the lower oven. And this is what it looks like. It, um, it rises pretty good. <laughs> so the next thing we want to do is break an egg into a little container. We're going to get our pastry brush. And we just want to use the white of it, so try not to disturb the yolk of the egg. We're simply using the white part. And we're going to gently brush this. Try not to deflate the bread. And what this is going to do is just give it a shiny coating. It's going to be beautiful. You can, of course, make this without doing the egg white on there, but this just gives it 
almost a protect, little protective shiny coating, if you will. I would liken it to the difference in not painting your fingernails and painting them with a clear coat, even though I don't paint my fingernails. But you know how shiny nails just look prettier. But that's what this does. And if you have anything you want to adhere to the top of it, something like sesame seeds or bagel seasoning or garlic salt, something like that, you are welcome to do it at this point while the egg wash is still wet. All right, so this egg is not wasted. Back in the container and that'll get used for something else. Now, what you wanna do is take your very sharpest knife and as crazy as it sounds, this is probably, this is a Pampered Chef knife. Probably got it at a party for a dollar or something. But man, this thing gets super sharp. If you have a razor blade, that's great. I probably need to get what's called, uh, I think it's called a LAME, L-A-M-E. And it's just basically a flat razor blade with a little sheath that holds it. And you can uh, hold it without cutting yourself, which <laughs> I kind of laugh when I think, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Some people, it doesn't matter what you put it in, they're still gonna cut themselves. All right, we're just gonna give it a quick dash across the top, just like that. So basically, we're just slashing lines in there. Hoping you can see that. Maybe that light is really too bright. We'll try this camera. Okay, I think you can see those slashes that I made there. Let me turn it on this way, it looks better than this side. There you go. Okay. So you may not be able to see it now, but you'll be able to see those when you take it out of the oven. And what that's going to do is just, um, it has allowed it, it has allowed the surface to break so the bread can expand bigger than what it would if you didn't have this in there. Sometimes you can see the bread crack around the edges right along here on the bottom because they've not made the slashes in the top. This just gives it that gives it that little extra approval to go ahead and rise more from the top. Okay, we're gonna put this in the oven. Our oven is preheated to about 350. And we're gonna put it in there for about 20 minutes. And we'll check it after 20 minutes and see what it looks like. You can always add more time to it, but you can't take it away. And we'll be right back to see what it looks like. Okay, our bread is done. And you can always cook yours darker if you want to. I'll have to reheat this when um, we have our lunch in a couple of days anyway, and I don't want it to be any darker. So we're gonna leave it just like that. Now here's a good way to see if your bread is done. You tap it and it sounds hollow. And I don't really know how to explain that other than you tap it and it sounds hollow. <laughs> But hey, thanks for joining us guys. See how easy this was? Even though you have time as far as letting your mixer run, then letting it rest, then letting it run again, and then letting the bread rest, and then letting it rise, but you do very little mixing, very little shaping, and then you do baking. So few ingredients, and I'm telling you, when you fix this, if nothing else in your meal is homemade, and this is the only thing that's homemade in your, uh, in your dinner that you're serving your guests, they will tune in to the fact that this is homemade and they'll say, this bread is so good. I just can't explain the difference in this and store-bought French bread, but there is a difference and I guarantee you, you will experience it when you, bake, when you bake this bread. So I hope you give it a try. Recipe is in the description as always, and we look forward to sharing something again with you real soon. Bye guys.